<laughs> okay. Well, hi everyone. Nice to see you. I feel like I haven't seen you in a couple of days. <laughs> uh, nice to see you. So I am going to call to order the March 3rd meeting of the African Heritage Reparation Assembly. Pursuant to chapter 20 of the Acts of 2021, this meeting will be conducted via remote means. Members of the public who wish to access the meeting may do so via Zoom or by telephone, see instructions. No in-person attendance of members of the public will be permitted, but every effort will be made to ensure that the public can adequately access the proceedings in real time via technological means. And I'm gonna just make sure, um, I'll do a quick check to make sure everybody can be heard. So if you- Can you just call the meeting first, please? Oh. At what time? Oh, sorry, 6.35. Thank you, Jennifer. Um, so if I, I'm gonna say your name and if you could just unmute and say present or here and make sure you can be heard. And so I'll start with you, Hala. Present. Great. Alexis. Read present. Nice. <laughs> um, Irv. Present. Great. Okay. And Jen, have you by chance heard from Yvonne or Dr. Shabazz at all today about the meeting? I haven't. Well, okay. Yvonne sent an email, right? Did you see that? I saw that she said that she would, yeah, let us know, but that it was possible she might not be able to make it. So yeah, I'm assuming that's the case. Um, let me just make sure. Okay. All right. Well, we um, will go ahead and get started and hopefully they'll be able to join us. So let's just begin by, we haven't been together for quite a few weeks now, um, and I am going to call a public comment period in a moment, but maybe just taking a moment to remember our ropes, the meeting etiquette that we've been using, and just taking a breath. That's what I need. <laughs> just a quick breath. All right. Anytime you need the singing bowl, it's right here. Oh my gosh, I really <laughs> good reason. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so we will go ahead and call our first public comment period because um, we do have some attendees. So I'm gonna read the public comment statement. During the public comment period, the chair will recognize members of the public. When called upon, please identify yourself by stating your full name, pronouns, and residential address. Residents are welcome to express their views for up to three minutes at the discretion of the chair based upon the number of people who wish to speak. No speaker can cede their time to another speaker. The AHRA will not engage in a dialogue or comment on a matter raised during public comment, but we will be listening closely. So if you'd like to make public comment, please go ahead and raise your hand. And there will be another public comment period later. So if something does come up um, that you'd like to comment on during um, the later part of the meeting, you can do that too. All right, seeing none, um, we are gonna, before moving into the discussion items, I just want to take a moment to see if any of the members have any just comments to make or questions since we haven't been together in almost a month. Okay. All right. So the first item on our agenda tonight is to talk about the town, the town council presentation on Monday and the memo that I drafted. Hopefully you've all had a chance. Give me a thumbs up if you've had a chance to look at that. Awesome, <laughs> that's so great. Okay, um, so I do we wanna pull it up onto the screen or do we wanna just discuss? Yeah, okay, let me do that. Hang on one second.
And then let me share my screen here. Can everybody see that? Okay, great. So this is the memo. It's a draft um, of what I would be submitting after it is approved or hopefully approved, but we can make amendments to it tonight. So I would be submitting this to the council president um, tonight after the meeting for inclusion in the packet for the town council meeting on Monday. Um, and this would sort of be the central piece of what the presentation would include on Monday. Um, and ultimately it will come with a motion asking that the town council direct the town manager um, to pursue this, to begin to pursue this. Uh, so what we can do now, before we talk about sort of the totality of our presentation on Monday night, let's start by reviewing this and just discussing it and talking about any changes that we would like to make, and then we can move on to talking about how we want to actually go about presenting on Monday. So if you have a comment, um, please raise your hand. Yes, Alexis. So, um, and okay, I feel like a lot of this has to do with me just being ignorant of this whole process. But um, I guess, so, so under the home rule petition process section, mm -hmm. um, we down. have, so, so it says below are the steps the town council would need to take to codify special legislation with respect to re rest reparations. And so these two steps are specifically about this, like our, our special home rule request, or is this about home rule petition process in general? Yeah, great. That's a great question. Um, so this does this is how any home rule petition would move through the process. Um, and I tried to make it specific with respect to our special legislation, um, but it will only impact Amherst. So this process only impacts Amherst. Um, but for example, another home rule petition that Amherst brought forward was ranked choice voting. So it went through the same process. Although in ranked choice voting, one difference is it was brought to the voters. So there's nothing in the law that requires a home rule petition to go out to the voters. But depending on what it is, sometimes a, a, a council may decide to bring it to the voters um, to sort of, I think it's sort to sort of bolster it as it works through the process, but it really depends on what it is. And I think that oftentimes if there's any sort of tax associated with it, it would go out to the voters. Um, so in our case, it's perfectly okay for it to just be approved by the town council and then turned over to Mindy and Joe to bring through the process. Does that answer? No, that's that's very helpful. I, I just said no, but I meant yes. Um, that was very helpful. Um, and I guess I'm wondering, so if that's not a, so I guess step one is almost like an, like an option. I, is that what I'm hearing or? So step one has to happen. So okay. you have, so when, but in this case, when it says gain local approval, the only requirement is the town council, like okay. local, you know what I mean? That's the local approval. Okay. It, it could be that the council would say, well, we want to, we, we also want to bring this to the voters. That's a possibility, but there's okay. no requirement by law for that to happen. Okay. Thank you. Very helpful. Yes, absolutely. Irv? Um, I was going to ask you if you have um, um, consulted with or 
taken this doctor to and had it reviewed by by Lynn and, and Mandy. Then I thought, well, that might be an open meeting law violation. So I won't ask that question. I, I, I think it probably might run a file of open meeting law. Um, but the other thing is, um, what about the um, uh, sharing this with and getting feedback from uh, the uh, town's attorney, uh, if that was appropriate? Yeah, I think that, no, I think that's really valid. Um, so the sort of in order to honor the AHRA, my agreement with Lynn was that first it would come to this body for review. And then, you know, if it was approved, the first thing that will happen tonight is that it will go to Lynn and Paul. And then if Lynn and Paul decide that they want to have it, you know, reviewed by a town council, so the town's attorney, then that can happen. Um, but I did ask one counselor to review it, um, which I don't believe is a violation of the open meeting law. Um, and it was Mandy. Um, and I asked her because she has written quite a bit of memo like this, and she's a lawyer. So I, um, she said that it was structurally sound, clear, it got across the message, she didn't see any issues with it. Um, but it will certainly go to Lynn tonight. So if there are any major issues that they saw with this for any reason, uh, we would find that out on Monday because <laughs> I wouldn't be able to come back to you all and share that between now and then, I don't believe. Um, I might have to just make, what I'd like to do is actually, aside from any amendments that you all would like to make to this tonight, if there are amendments, I'd like the motion to give me the sort of flexibility to make any changes that might need to be made in order to just make sure that it's, you know, sound. Um, and so we could draft the motion that way. But Mandy felt confident that it was, she said that it, it, it was, it looked good. So there was that feedback. Does that answer that question, Irv? It certainly does. Okay, great. And the other thing that I think is important to know is the packet will also include the source document. So the KP law full um, uh, opinion, which you've already seen, it's already been in, in an earlier packet. Um, it will also be included because there are counselors who have not seen it or read it. Most counselors have not seen it or read it. So if they want to refer, in fact, at the end of this document, I'm going to include a link to all of the resources on our webpage, as well as they'll receive um, the source document. <laughs> yes, Alexis. So for when we say, these three possible paths, mm -hmm. are we are we saying that they are gonna go, well, and I know that we don't exactly have a choice in what they do, but mm -hmm. like, is this choose one or is it a possibility of choose all or how does it? That's a really good question. Um, I think that there is nothing that precludes us from going about this in any one of these ways. Um, and so all this does is get the process for the special legislation started, but it, may, it could fail. It could, it, it could not move through the process. It could be rejected. Um, and then in that case, we would come back to the drawing board and we would have these other options and we would have to really think about structuring what we do based on those options. Um, but this at least gives us, because if if we, and I, I tried to really clarify this in the document here that the last thing we wanna do is have the African heritage community come up with a reparations plan and then not be able to distribute funds. So I'm looking to be really proactive to make sure that whatever we need to do. And in this case, this path takes a long time. So getting it started now as opposed to waiting. Okay. 
Paula, did you have any questions or comments on this? This part feels pretty straightforward to me. Okay, great. All right, so do we want to um, make a motion? Are we ready to make a motion or do we, what is the sense? I think, Irv, I know that you've had a good sense about this. Do you think we should make a motion to direct, to direct me to? Yeah, I, I think what I think is that um, you should draft a motion right now mm -hmm. and make that motion and then someone can second and then we can vote on it. Okay, perfect. Hala, yeah. I did, I was taking this for granted, but maybe I should clarify. As, as I understand in the past when we've worked with the town council, if there are things that there is a back and forth, like this isn't a one and done, if it's voted out, we can never bring it forward again, correct? Um, you mean like if on Monday the town council looks at this document and they say, no, we're not going to direct the town manager to do this. No, we could certainly ask again. <laughs> um, absolutely. Um, and I appreciate you saying taking that for granted because really we don't know, we don't have any guarantees, but um, we could certainly bring it back again. Or we could, um, if there were some discoverables, like some things, some questions that needed to be answered or something, we could gather that information and bring it back. Thank you. Sure. Irv? Uh, that's a good point. You know what? One of the things that, that is possible in terms of bringing this before the town council, uh, they may vote on it that evening. They may postpone the vote to put, put a ticket to a subcommittee mm -hmm. um, um, for either further study or for uh, uh, confer, uh, conforming to the processes that they have in mind. You know, they have uh, committees that deal with this kind of thing. So um, there are any number of things could, that could happen uh, during this uh, with this particular proposal. Uh, so I wouldn't be surprised uh, if uh, any one of those things took place. Uh, I would assume that um, that they may not uh, want to vote on it that evening. Yeah. Yeah. So we, we're sort of going in knowing and being prepared for any number of outcomes. Like Herb said, um, my strong sense is that we will get approval to do this, particularly because KP law is the it recommended it um, and that we've done the work to speak with Mindy and we know what the process is. And so my hope, my great hope is that we will get it through on Monday, but I think that Irv and Hala are correct that any number of what uh, any number of things could happen. So I am going to just pop over. I'm going to open up a new document so that I can um, dra draft a motion on the spot. <laughs> Unless um, do you, it will this be good for you, Jennifer? If I just type it and you can look at it. Um, I mean, if you just say it straight and don't change it, like in the mix yeah. of creating it, then I can. <laughs> I can follow that. I am a real, I'm not the best motion writer. So I okay. guess we can just type it up then. Okay. <laughs> Move to um, approve the memo. What is the name of the memo here? Um, What happened? That's oh, here we go. Um, memo to town council regarding proposed home rule petition. Memo to approve. Memo to. Approve. All right. Move to approve the memo to town council regarding home rule petition and direct the AHRA chair to present memo to the council. 
March 7th, 2022. Um, Are you going to include the piece about you making revisions? Yes, exactly. That was the next line here. Um, Yes, Hala. This is just a, an organizational or structural question about, um, do we need to have clarity in the town council home rule petition stating that it's for the AHRA? Um, are there many home rule petitions or is it because it's coming under the AHRA? You don't need to say like HR 40 or HRA, HRA thing. Yeah, you mean like to have a bill number associated with it? Is that or even yeah? Because like it says, draft memo to town council regarding proposed home rule petition. But couldn't that be a home rule petition for anything? Yes, absolutely. I think that's a great catch. So move to approve the memo to town council regarding home rule petition for reparations. Is that that? And does that? No, 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 no. No, all right. Help me, help me out here. <laughs> all right. So, uh, see, I was looking at move to approve the memo to town council regarding the home rule petition uh, presented by A R A H R A. Great. Thank you. Thank you both. To, yeah, to the town council. To the town council. But, well, that should be done because you already. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You don't need it. Yeah. Yeah. Say it takes a village. <laughs> it sure does. <laughs> okay. Sure, All right. Well. So before I read it, before I actually move, um, are there any other comments, or is it look okay? Well, we'll have, I'll ask for discussion again. So I move to approve the memo to town council regarding the home rule petition presented by AHRA and to direct the AHRA chair to present the memo to the town council on March 7th, 2022. AHRA agrees that chair can make necessary revisions per council president and or town manager prior to submission to the full town council. Is there a second? Second. Great, any further discussion? All right, so let's just go to a roll call vote. I'll start with you, Irv. Rose, aye. Alexis? Reed, aye. Hala? Lord, aye. Great, so, and Miller, aye. <laughs> um, so it passes unanimously. All right, great. Did you get all that, Jennifer, or do you want me to keep this up? Okay. All right, perfect. So, oh yes, Alexis. Um, I, re I remember originally we had talked about like all of us showing up at town council. Um, it, is there gonna be some sort of like, like are they gonna wanna ask us questions or anything? Or is that like, like I'm at every town council meeting just because I, I run them for Amherst Media. Um, so I'll be there. But like, do you like need us to be there as participants? I have asked Lynn to bring any AHRA member that is present into the room for this discussion. Um, and I would like for any AHRA member that's there to be there um, and be seen and heard. Um, if they would like to be. So um, what will happen is Lynn will send out an order of timing 
in the next, I, she usually sends it maybe Monday morning and I will send that to you and give you sort of a sense of the timing so that I know you'll be there, Alexis, the whole way through, but for others who may not, um, I'll give a sense of timing. And then when it comes time for us, Athena will bring whoever's there into the room. And with respect to the presentation, that was what I really wanted to ask you all. Um, we will present the memo. I want to give, they'll have already seen it. I'll present it. I want to give them an opportunity to discuss it and ask questions because this will be the first time that they will have kind of had any discussion around this. Um, but I was also thinking that this is an opportunity for AHRA members to be heard. Um, and so wanting to propose and put that out to you all in terms of ideas, um, we'll have about, I've asked for 15 minutes. So let's say it takes two minutes to present the memo and then we give time for questions. Um, but this is an opportunity. I really look at this as an opportunity for us. So I see your hand up, Irv. Uh, I just said I would love to be there, but um, my calendar just won't permit it. OK, no problem. Let's, we'll get you a video and um, make sure that you're recognized um, even without being there. And then if you have anything, you can submit it in an email to the chair. If there's anything in particular that you would want to say, that might be helpful too. And Michelle, can you remind me how much time did you ask for? Did you say 15 minutes? Yes, exactly. So I, I was I was kind of just like brainstorming some ideas and I was thinking, you know, at this point in our process, I think they've, so the, the town council, I feel, has been really good for the most part in following along with this process. Um, they've been reading um, the, his, the historical documents and the disparity report. I think many of them have read. They've come to symposiums. Um, so um, I think it's an opportunity for them to hear from members. And one idea I had was just to sort of have each of the members that can be there talk for a couple minutes about why this is important. You know, why is it important um, to, to you? And why did you choose to join the AHRA um, and sort of what it means to you? Another thing, Another option I had thought about because Dr. Tartikov brought um, a really good point to my attention, which is we had this resolution that the town council passed, but we never actually had any ceremony around it or any, any, anything really around it um, to, to bring people together to to sort of really take in the acknowledgement. Um, so bringing the resolution forward again is also an option. So I, I leave it to you all if you have ideas um, that totally open to, to whatever. Any thoughts on that? Do so, Hala. Do you plan to be there on Monday? Yes. Yeah. Okay. And I think Dr. Shabazz said he was planning to be there as well. Um, Alexis, will you actually be able to sort of switch gears? Okay. <laughs> um, so you plan to come into the room and be part of the presentation? Okay, great. Um, so would you all feel comfortable having just a couple minutes to say some words? We could do a combination. We could bring up the resolution again and we could take the time to say a couple words. Yes, Alexis. Yeah, I would, I would really appreciate the opportunity to be able to say those a little bit more personalized things, um, especially since, um, you know, yeah, it is very tied to 
you know, our identities in this. So I, I feel like it would help in, in it, you know, words coming from the community. So um, I, I would personally appreciate being able to say something, but um, if you, it, it would be good to know how long I have to be able to say, because I don't want to go over or cut into anybody else's time. So I guess if, if we have 15 minutes, how, like, do we each get one minute just so that, so yeah, I don't know if you have any guidance to that. Well, we, there's a couple strategies we could take. So, or a couple approaches, I guess I should say, um, if we start off with sort of raising up and lifting up the resolution and the voices of the community first, if that takes 10 minutes and we only have five minutes left to do the memo and have the council discuss, I think there will be some flexibility to give us a little more time, probably not much more time because <laughs> you've seen how these, these meetings run, you know, they're pretty on point. Um, the other way to think about it is to sort of have the memo presented first and have the council have their discussion, but let them know that we, that, that the AHRA members have a few words to say at the end. Um, either way, I would say, depending if Hala, I'm going to call on you, Hala, and please tell me what your feeling is about um, speaking on Monday. Yes, I was thinking um, bringing a charge in front of our town council was um, much more benign, in my opinion, than passing a resolution that will directly um, support some parts of our community than others. And I know there were some constituents that had issues with just the charge. So I think if we bring some of our personal stories, it might help create a different understanding as to why we're doing this ask of this petition for the, the home resolution. So I'm in favor of a, a couple of personal stories and or connections as well to help educate and inform those who might not know. Awesome. Awesome. So we have two, two voices already. And then of course, I will check with Yvonne and Dr. Shabazz. Um, and maybe what I can do is if, if they both would like to speak, then I, I'll be able to kind of email you all and say, plan on this amount of minutes based on how many voices there are going to be. D does that work? All right, great. And then, um, yeah, I, I don't know if anyone has a sense one way or another about like the whether the voices and the resolution come first or come after. Um, but so I'm open, but my sense is just based on the way that things kind of flow and have gone that I think sort of framing it with the resolution and the voices could be really good or bringing the resolution forward, doing the memo piece, and then having the voices, but whatever way you all would like to do it works. And, you know, given that start, that's a logistical thing, so we won't be violating open meeting law, I don't think. If I'm emailing you timing and stuff, we can sort of determine what which direction we want to go in for that once we know if Dr. Shabazz and Yvonne would also like to speak. Yes, Jennifer. No, nope. oh, <laughs> nothing. Oh, okay. So is that good? We good with that plan? All right, awesome. So are you oh. guys doing the resolution or no? Like I. I wasn't yeah. clear. Yeah, I think I think so. I think what we could do is um, let me see if I can just quickly pull up the resolution. Um, uh, okay. So here's the resolution, um, and let's see here. Um, what we could do is read the be it further resolved. Um, I, 
I don't necessarily think we need to read all the whereas, but Jennifer, when you've done ceremonial things like this, is it usually the be it further resolved sections that get read? Or does it depend? No, it's usually, I usually do proclam have proclamations and they're usually read by the town council in full. The whole thing. Well, hey, that's not a bad idea too, is that we could engage the council by asking them to take like literally asking them to take turns we could request that if it, that any counselors who would be willing to would read um and start with that um and then move into the memo or if you <laughs> you do you have some thoughts on this even though you're not going to be there um not really um hmm. I guess the question that I have is that this this resolution um, this 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 is this just being presented? Maybe I'm missing something here. No, no, this was a I think so. No. Right. <laughs> yeah. <Right. This> <laughs> <laughs> so why are we talking about it when since it's, it's already been voted on? Yeah. It's it's because this resolution is basically what set things off in the sense of it they they agreed the town council agreed by virtue of approving this resolution to engage in a path of remedy. Um and that is in let's see here. Um where are we? Uh, okay, so the second to last, be it further resolved that the Amherst Town Council is committed to engaging in a path of remedy for Black Amherst residents who have been injured or harmed by discrimination and racial injustice. And this was approved and all the work started happening, but it really never, it really never had, it never had any sort of celebration around it or moment of ceremony around it or anything like that. Um, it just sort of got put on the website. Jennifer, you do, you, oh, Hala, or I'm sorry, Alexis, I saw that your hand's up. I, uh, mm, okay, I don't, so maybe this isn't the right time to say this, but I guess I'm wondering, so, so I'm sorry, maybe I just, I maybe I completely mixed the context in which we're, like, I, I understand that this kicked off things, but this is, is this what we were talking about was effective or wasn't effective? Or, well, okay, so the reason why I asked this is, I guess, I'm wondering how, how this is being tracked like in terms of, cause the, the town council says, according to this, it says the town council will engage, for example, will engage in individual and collective work to understand the bias, right? And then the town council affirms its commitment to eradicating the effects. And so I guess I'm wondering like, is there a way by which the town council or the town of Amherst is is checking in, engaging these, like it's one thing to say something, you know? And like, we can like, like it's one thing for me to like say, sorry, it's another thing to like actually be committed in that work. And in the same way that I feel like it's very easy for people to hire people with those marginalized identities to do that work instead of like, committing to the work. So I guess that was a really long way of me asking, is there a way that this is like being like that work is being tracked and, and that engagement and that commitment, like, is, is there any way to see that these commitments are actually being committed to? I'm going to, I'm going to turn that over to our assistant director of DEI to, um, to give some input on that. 
if you're so willing. <laughs> you don't know. I'm just trying to think of the best way to say it. So I my take on this is that this document has been used when we want to hold people accountable, maybe, and say, you know, particularly if they're not moving on something that wanted to that the community might want to happen and then they can say, but you made this commitment, right? Um, but your point is very good, right? How do we know like that that's being done? I know that's being done to some degree because they're cre they've created the CSSJC. We're gonna end up the resident advisory board. They're working on the youth empowerment center. They're working on the BIPOC community center. They're working on, um, the Crest program and then the DEI department, but I know that because I'm inside. So I don't know how, like maybe that's something that the DEI director and I can work on having on our page where we kind of hold that, that information of stuff, or maybe the town council should hold it on their page since it's their resolution. But I've seen the document be used as a measure of accountability. Yeah, and I think it will be a team effort between staff and the town council and um, in really coming back to this. And I think all of the things that Jennifer just mentioned are all happening, including the work we're doing in this, in this committee. Um, so I think, but it's a matter of us. And that's sort of why I was suggesting that we bring it before the council again to sort of reactivate and energize it <laughs> to say like this is what we've agreed to and it was sort of you know it happened but let's let's come back to it and like be with it for a minute but alexis i think that your part your point is really valid um about how do we know what's going on right because it's so at some point i think there's they're more of a personal piece of it so that the counselors themselves are educating themselves. And so how do we see that as being done? So you could bring that up because again, lots of times we have these beautiful written things and then they get put on the website and then that's it because nobody's holding them accountable for it. So there's, you know, lots of ways you could kind of move forward with that. Irv, I saw that your hand was up. Did you want, are you all set? Uh, yes. Okay. All right. So, oh, yes, Alexis. I'm sorry. So I, I said this at the very beginning, but in about 15 minutes, I'm going to have to like leave and then I can come back, but I'm realizing that that's probably going to create a quorum problem. Yes. It definitely will cause a quorum problem. <laughs> yeah. Um, I can come back, but I just, I have to go do something and then I'll be back. How long um, will we be gone? 50. It'll take me 15 minutes. Oh, 15 total. Because the only thing we can't like, we can't act on anything without you here, but we can go through, go over things. Okay. You and discuss. Is that right, Jennifer? We just can't act. Okay. So is that in two minutes you said you have to go? In, in 15. In 15 for 15. Yes. Right? In, in theory, you would end the meeting and then re uh what is the word i'm looking for and then restart the meeting when she comes back i'm sorry no it's okay it's, <laughs> it's fine um so but given that we all that the sort of guideline is that we can't act um is can we just continue on but only just stay in discussion during that period and alexis would you be okay with us continuing just with discussing okay Okay. Um, all right. So let's move on here to, I'm just now I'm with that information in mind, just want to take a minute to look at this again. Um, so, well, I'll quickly tell you that the black census, um, it has been kicked off. Um, the process has started. We will probably start to see some, some information back by the end of the month. Um, so depending on when our next meeting is, we'll have the opportunity to look at that. Um, and I think the Dunahue Institute was really looking forward to this work and um, I think it's going to be really great. So I just, again, thank Herb and everybody who kind of worked on getting that together. 
Um, all right, let's move into a conversation about the harm. Actually, let's go to community engagement. And I'm just going to pull up something here. Well, so did you guys decide what you were going to do? Um, I think we decided that we're going to check in with Yvonne and, and Dr. Shabazz, see if they want to speak. Um, and no, it does, I don't think we have, maybe we can circle back to it at the end of the meeting just to confirm what we wanna do for Monday um, because we're not gonna to have to make a motion on it. And if anybody has to leave, they can leave and we won't spend more time on that right now. Maybe just need a minute to process that. Does that work? Okay, all right. All right. So I'm going to pull up hang on one second. Oh. Okay. All right. Okay. Um, so this is the last thing I sent you and you may not have had a chance. To, who had a chance to look at this? I did, certainly did. You, you, you did not, Irv? Uh, I did not. Okay. Do you want to take a minute just to look at it, or do you want me to start talking? Why don't you just go ahead and go through it, and I'll, okay. I'll always catch up later. Sure. Okay. So I've been sort of giving a lot of thought to how we might move forward with our engagement and education process, and I've been looking at some other frameworks particularly the framework that Providence, Rhode Island is using, which if you have an opportunity to look at what they have been doing, please do. It's really, really amazing work. It's remarkable. Um, and so I have taken some pieces um, from what they have done. The last time we talked about community engagement, we came up with a list of all of the individuals and organizations that we want to touch in this process. And I think that was really helpful. It was very comprehensive. But we need a framework for how we are to pursue this work or it will just, it's, it's, it's a big piece of what we're gonna do. So um, this is a proposal um, that, we can we can sort of begin to talk about this. Um, we do just to uh, just look at the date, just to confirm on the 13th of March, we have the brown bag um, event with the League of Women Voters at 1 p.m. So I've checked with all of you. I think several of you said that you could make it. Jennifer, did, are you able? To, you you said you can make that. Yeah. Um, so people are starting to register for that. It's been put out in various different ways. It's on Facebook. I think Jennifer is going to add it if she can to the community calendar. Um, and so that's sort of our first event where we'll be there as many of us as possible and bringing people together to talk about what we're doing. So let's just go through this, just keeping that in the back of your mind. So for this engage piece, um, the, first, the first piece that I'm proposing is that we develop a written survey. Um, the survey will be a way of determining the extent to which the first two reports that our foray have already um, completed are being engaged with, the impact of the reports. So how is the community taking in this information, the historical timeline of anti-Black structural racism, the current disparities? Um, what are people's perspectives on the report? And what interest do folks have in getting involved um, so that's what the survey would hope to capture. Um, and we'll be able to use it to direct community members when engaging them online. So it would, um, if we were, if, if we had it the way we wanted it, we would make it available on our website and perhaps on Engage Amherst's website as well. Um, and then we would also use it 
when we are doing any of our forums or our listening sessions or any of our community outreach events. Um, and this would be, uh, this would cross all demographics. So this would go out to the whole community. Um, and the way that Providence did this was really interesting. They put it out to the whole community and they got about 400 responses. When they, when they looked at the data, they actually separated out data that came from BIPOC and um, and separated the data out from the uh, the white respondents. Just so you, I, I'll I'll send that. That was really interesting um, way of of looking at it. Um, and then the second part of this is with the assistance of the survey with the Black Census with BAM, we would develop an interview questionnaire. Um, and again, Providence did this, their questionnaire is excellent. You can link to it here. Um, and here we would identify African heritage individuals with generational, personal, familiar, and community ties to Amherst to interview. And the data collected would be the basis for the harm and impact reports that we're working on um, and the foundation for the African heritage community to use to develop reparation proposals. Um, so these two, these tools would be used online through multiple channels in listening sessions, forums, social gatherings, etc. So I'm going to pause there. My son is here with a question um, and Irv, you can go ahead, please. Well, I think you better take your son. Real quick. Yeah, take your son first. Oh, that's not good, shaking your head. All right, I'm back. All right, okay, so let's, let's look at this. Sure. I, I wish I would have uh, had the opportunity to have looked at this before, but unfortunately I didn't. But be there as it may. So the first thing, when it says develop a written survey, mm -hmm. uh, the survey will be a way of determining the extent to which the first two reports are being engaged with. Mm -hmm. What what are the first two reports? Mm -hmm. Yeah. B, B, if there are two reports that you would have had people would have had been expected to have read in order to complete the survey. Mm -hmm. It seems to me that you're going to have a very limited group of a uh, limited sample. Yeah, so the idea would be actually that the reports and so let me just answer your first question. The reports are the first report that RFRA put out, which was the partial historical timeline of anti black structural racism in Amherst. The second report was the black white disparity report. I think they're both about 40 pages. Many community members have already seen them, um, but we're not clear what, how people are engaging with them, how, what perspectives people have about that, having received and heard that information. But the idea would be that the reports would be made available with the survey. So it would be a way of getting this information out to the community and then having a survey that went with it. Uh, first question about that. How would this survey be done? Yeah. Uh, because you're talking about two 40 page documents going along with a, uh, a questionnaire. Uh, how would you see that being conducted? Yeah, um, so the survey would, first of all, would have to be developed. Um, I'm, I have um, contacted Mattia Kramer, who helped with our research, and Anita Sorrow. Um, they've been working together to see if we can get sort of a team together to, to put the survey together. Um, but ideally, it, we'd be able to get it in some sort of digital format. Um, so I can pull up what Providence did, if that would be helpful for us to look at. 
um, they did an amazing job in the way that they've, they, what they did is actually really cool. Um, they created a QR code, a QR, whatever that's called, a QR patch that they, that they put all around town that people could just literally put their phones up to and bring them to the survey, um, which I thought was really a neat way of, of getting people um, to access the survey. Jennifer, is it I just have a couple of questions. So the survey is going out to the entire community. And then, so if, if that's the case, are you having it translated? That's a great question. Um, that is a question. And then, then you would have to translate the reports. But then I was also thinking maybe it would be helpful if you could go, because me, I'm always trying to be in a neighborhood somewhere, but go have like, um, I don't want to call it an open forum, but have some type of event where you're going through the report for folks. I mean, the reports are long, right? right? And we already, the town already has like five surveys out now for different town initiatives. Mm -hmm. So I just am always concerned when we want to add another survey to something and then add additional information with it. Mm -hmm. So you know, and maybe one of the things you could have like a listing session to, for it or, or something similar to that to add on to it. So maybe you could get additional responses back from people that way. And then how do you, what are you using like the census for the listserv? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so um, the sir, I, I don't, I'm not sure yet how we would go about other than the multiple channels that we already have so you know contacting every organization that we know that would be willing to send this out to their lists um and asking the town you know if if they would promote it as well um which it sounds like they they are doing with some other surveys um, asking our media, so the Amherst Indie, the Amherst Current, the Gazette, putting a press release out, like basically using all of the channels that we have to get this out um, to as many. I'm just, I'm just concerned about the people that aren't tapped into town business. If you're not tapped into town business, that decreases the, the opportunity that you're going to receive this information, right? So I, you know, no, I love your idea of going, and and I think that's what you know. Part of this is is actually going oh, in. Did she just leave? <laughs> Can you call the meeting for that's now? The room. What time is it? It is seven thirty-two. Exactly. So, are we able to keep talking? You are more than welcome to keep talking. I'm just going to keep the record on too. <laughs> okay. All right. So, so I. I have significant issues with uh, this and the issues are, is that to trying to do this survey as outlined here is very problematic. Okay. Um, you know, um, on, on a number of uh, different fronts. Uh, one, it, it, it would uh, just the sheer size of the information that needs to be digest, digested by a uh, prospective survey um recipient uh that the, and then responding to that the questions thereof which requires them to read it digest it understand it and then respond to the questions i i think that uh doing a survey of that kind uh is uh, has a very 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 limited utility in terms of the populations that who are likely Mm -hmm. to set through that, including mm -hmm. yours truly. <laughs> well, that's the best, uh, you know, <laughs> feedback you can give is, um, so, well, so just to, to say, to, the, to, to sort of respond, first, I'm open to any and all ideas, but, you know, this doesn't, the survey doesn't have to be limited necessarily to having read the reports. It's more about beginning to engage with the community about reparations. And so putting a survey out that it could be as general as we want it to be really, like, what are your feelings about this? What, you know, 
we could design anything we want. I think a survey is a really effective way. Um, and it, you know, like Jennifer said, there are a few others out right now. It's a really effective way of capturing data. Um, and so, and given that we can put it online and also um, have the ability to include it in our listening sessions and other forums, I don't see how else we would sort of be able to capture, um, you know, on this large scale, what we would want to be able to capture. Um, go ahead, Jennifer. I think that it would be helpful if uh, you, Michelle, yeah. and maybe others here, um, could outline the objectives of, of the survey. Mm -hmm. um, the infra information that you would like to receive as a result of the survey. Mm -hmm. uh, and then uh, construct, start beginning be from that, with those two things in mind, start to construct a survey. The other part of that obviously is, uh, is what populations, population or populations do you wish to reach? It, it, because when you when you look at it, when you look at any survey. I mean, if you don't have any objectives in mind, then the survey becomes unwieldy. Uh, that's a, that's a great second. Idea. The second thing is if you don't know what why you are doing a survey and what you wish to get out of it, then the survey becomes useless because you don't know where you're going. You know, if you don't, if you. If, if, if it's sort of like you don't know what road you're traveling on or what direction you want to go, then any road will take you there. So, and that's not what you want to uh, want, want to do. So, I would yeah. suggest if, if you're going to do a survey, and as Jennifer says, several server, several survey surveys are out there, then I would look at doing it that way. Then I'd also say, how does that survey impact with your second? Uh, thing in terms of the interview questionnaire. How, yeah. are those two, how are those two related, interrelated, not related, or interrelated, and can they be accomplished with one? Yeah. Um, well, in particular, the interview questionnaire is specifically for African heritage residents, so or or people that have even lived here previously. So we would use the Black census to identify folks in the African heritage community that would be willing to respond to the questionnaire. Um, and I will just pull this up real quick so you can look at it. Um, this is what Providence's questionnaire looks like, and obviously it's specific for their community, um, but it would only be for African heritage residents um, in this case. So, um, Oh, I thought the survey was for everyone. Yep, the survey is for everyone, but Er was asking about the interview questionnaire. Oh, okay, sorry. Yeah, no, no, that's fine. Um, so the second part of this here is using the survey and the black census and the black um, assembly of amherst massachusetts stakeholder group they'll develop this interview questionnaire um, using the this with the support of those things and then identify individual african heritage residents um, to interview and so it's, it's essentially like oral history taking um, but you you know you have kind of a, a questionnaire that you're that you're using um, as your template for doing that. And then that information gets collected and and put together. So and that can help to inform the harm impact reports that the research team is working on. Um, and it has a structure to it in this sense. Um, excuse me one second before I just I need to turn my camera off just for one second. Sorry. Um, just give me one quick second here. I don't even know how to do that when I'm there we go. What's happening? Mark? What is happening? I, I can't oh, but you're not me. muted, Michelle. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, here we go. Well, 
I, maybe it's, it would be great maybe if we reached or if if she or someone from AHRA reached out to Providence to see what, how like if they thought that was the, the survey was successful. I mean, Providence is pretty big and they said they got 400 responses back. I mean, I guess that's pretty good. But I also know like the senior center just sent out a 40 question question survey for seniors like that's. I, don't know. I get a little bit worried with those things, um, but I have ideas for when you're like actually ready to put things out. So one of the things that I suggested for the senior center survey, and because you can't translate everything in English into multiple languages and then mail it out, you know, so was that, you know, the schools always put in something that says if you need translation in this language, if you need it in this language, and if you need it in that language, but then you just have to make sure that you have someone that's available to make sure that that can be translated, which also comes to mind that there's some people that just aren't literate. And so you should definitely have some uh, listening sessions for it. Yeah. 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 I, that's an excellent idea. So you have somebody that can speak any one of those languages that you would refer, basically, if somebody needed translation, it referred to that person. Yeah. That's an awesome idea. Um, and then I guess for boots on the ground, I would utilize the ambassadors. They're probably the ones that are around in the community the most, although I, you know, they're all college students. So I, I, you know, yeah, we've talked about that. <laughs> I go back and forth with that one. Um, but, you know, the other thing is you can, every community has like that one person that's kind of tapped in with everyone in the area, in the immediate area, or maybe there's a few of them. And so we could give people stipends perhaps to kind of help get that survey out to folks in their com immediate communities. I mean, there's just a lot of different things that you could do once you're, once you settle this part out. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you're really hitting on something. So that's exactly what Providence in this case did is they identified stakeholders in the unique communities and paid them a small stipend to basically, um, get the to to get the survey out into their community um and and it was very successful it sounded like and to sort of answer your earlier question i'll send you the report they put together but it sounds like they felt the survey um was very 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 helpful in their process um and it also helped them to see that the research reports that they had put together weren't really being engaged with so they made them like they have more visuals to them now for example so there was sort of a lot of that um because like you're saying a 40 page document is way different than um a few pages that have visuals that sort of capture what the report has you know um irv is your hand still up about is your uh, hand I, I wanted to lower uh, how, you know however i think i was when you do a survey, it's, it is such an important step. And so if you're going to do it, then the amount of energy and time that it takes to do it, you really want to be able to get really good results. So therefore, it would be good to take some time to really look at the questions, even the questions that I've just briefly looked at, at uh, in terms of providence, um, we might want to rephrase and put in a different form and whatever format you're gonna put this in, which is also important. Um, and more importantly, who is going to develop this survey? Well, that's, that's really up to us. Um, I just want to come back to your point about the objectives, Irv, because I think that's a really great recommendation and something that um, could be worked on between now and the next meeting. Um, I just want to pause and see, Hala, do you have any thoughts on this or questions or anything at this moment? I did, but it might be more in the um, dissemination of the survey. I don't know. Okay. 
important to say now or later? Yeah, I think maybe because this is like kind of the first time that we're talking about this. Um, I feel confident that I can get volunteers together um, to begin to work on the survey, um, to bring back to this group um, as a guide to start. Um, but it's totally up to the assembly how we would like to develop and again, keeping in mind, I think the survey is sort of the more general, broad reaching um, data collection method. And then the interview questionnaire is specifically for African heritage residents. And that is sort of the next, that would come after the survey was completed. So we don't even really have to necessarily get into that at this moment if we wanna focus on the survey. Yes, Hala. Um, I'm grateful there's volunteers to help draft this. I don't know if any of them have a background in research or if we can have someone later look at it because the way you ask questions can be very, um, I can't remember the word, but we can be getting the answers we're looking for about how we craft the question. So if we can have someone neutral later say, oh, there's bias in the way we're asking this or that, that might be helpful to get more um, unbiased. And actually, Heather, whatever your thoughts were previously probably would be helpful in figuring, crafting out what the, the questions for the survey anyways, right? If when you look at things from the back end. I think I understand what you're saying. I know I didn't explain it very well because I don't, there's, I don't like, I don't really have anything to, to use, but I, you know, just going through the process with Cress, right? We have to have an evaluation plan we have to have all these different plans and it's just kind of one of those things oh, now i got to start taking minutes alexis is back um it's just one of those things where you know we have to kind of start at the end to kind of get to the front or to the beginning yeah yeah, oh. yeah oh, and okay. i i i think that's a great point about bias and so matia kramer who led the two research reports that we did does have a research background, um, as, as does Anita Saro, who worked with her and some others that worked um, to produce those reports. Um, and I think that, you know, what, what I'd also, what I could also do is touch base with the folks who have crafted the senior survey and other surveys so that we're sort of trying to get a standardized format that the town has used um, and maybe even improving upon it um as we do this Irv? well you know um developing survey and interview questions is both an art and a science and there are people who specialize in doing this and um and and, and obviously you know those groups are known um like the don hugh institute people mm -hmm. they Really know how to do this. Uh, what's happening? Uh, you Alexis? Not muted, Alexis. Alexis, you're not muted. Oh, sorry. <laughs> oh, there you good. Okay. That was neat. <laughs> when I it was like, I could see. Okay, I'm glad Alexis is back. Um, can I just ask yeah. you to recall the meeting so that we can start on time with the specific time? Sure. Do you need me to read the whole statement again? Or? Nope. I just need to say we're going to resume now at. We're going to resume the meeting of the African Heritage Reparation Assembly at 7.48 p.m. Um, and then I will be right back. So don't make any big decisions. We won't. Um, so, Irv, I think. I would, if I think what I've heard you say is um, that it might be useful for us to touch base with the Dunahue Institute and let them know that we're developing this survey. And I have a meeting actually with Paul on Monday, so I could speak with him about that too. And we can see if their expertise could potentially be uh, is that what is that what you were? Oh, yeah, what, I, what I'm saying is, you know, it, it costs nothing to talk with them. They'll talk with you about anything. It's just that when uh, it comes to then 
implementing this when it's cost, but um, they will have uh, um, really good ideas and information in terms of really conducting a really good first rate survey. Awesome. And especially in, also in terms of interview questions, it's they, this is what they do. So I, I would highly recommend that they, they be consulted with. Again, it, they, you know, they will give you great suggestions, et cetera. And if, then if you wanted them to do it, then that's where the costs come in. But before, yeah, no, no. And so I think that's, yeah, I, I, I think that's an excellent suggestion. I will reach out to Carrie, who we're already working with. Um, and talk with her just sort of informally about this. And then I'll also have a conversation with Paula Monday, because if we are in agreement that doing the survey and then having the interview questionnaire or sort of the oral history taking um, for the African heritage residents is a good method, then I, I think that engaging the Dunahue Institute more on this would be beneficial to us, um, depending on what it will cost us to do this. And I'd like to ask Jennifer if the other surveys, like the senior survey and the other ones that she says are out, how, what process have they gone through? Who developed them? Did anybody, you know, from any of these organizations help or if it was all just volunteer based? But I think you're, you're absolutely right that if we want to develop a survey that is going to be, um, to get the results essentially that we want, we should do that. So all, I would... all right, the, the last thing here, um, yeah. when I look at your interview questionnaire, it says interview questionnaire is similar to what Providence did here and identify African heritage individuals with generational personal familial and community ties to Amherst to interview. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The, the, um, when I look at that, I said, are we, are we talking about people only who have generational uh, ties to Amherst, or are we talking about African Americans who have generational and African Americans who have personal and African Americans who have familiar? I mean, what is which one of these are are we really wanting to get at? Are we talking about generational ties, mm -hmm. which and, and that includes uh, personal, familial, and community. They're, they're all tied in, but the guiding one, uh, the one uh, that is guides the whole thing is uh, an individual who has generational ties to members. Is that what you're saying? No, I, I there was no order there. It was just any one of those things. Any one uh, of those things. Yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. All right, so again, uh, it would be really a, a get, uh, good to determine what are you looking for? What, what, do we, what do we want to get out of this? What, mm -hmm. Because when you start doing these interviews, what, what is it that after, after they've gone through this interview questionnaire, mm -hmm. what, information out, what is information out of there, there that we will be able to use in some manner to guide the decision-making process going forward. And, and yeah, going decision-making process going forward. And what decisions will we be looking to make? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And I, so I, I think that, I think this piece of the process will come with more development and will come as we've gone through and, and developed a survey and, and have that process established and maybe even completed. Um, and then using that to guide us because the black census is going to be um, integral in reaching African Americans blacks in the community. Um, so this is we I, I'm not worried about bullet point number two at this moment. I think we can sort of table it for now. Um, but when we get to the sort of it ties into the harm report and that's part of our discussion tonight, but I want to just kind of hold that for a second. So I and, and just summarize what I've heard you say with respect, what I've heard assembly members say with respect to the survey. Um, so for the survey, we're going to, I'm going to um, 
determine what the objectives are. I'm going to reach out to the Dunahue Institute. I'm going to reach out to the research team that we worked with for the two original reports. I'm going to speak further with Jennifer um, to understand how the other surveys are being completed in the town and who's sort of touched those and helped those to be developed. Um, and then based on all of that information, come back to the assembly um, with further, you know, with further development of this of this part of the process and of the survey. Um, so I don't think there's anything, any action that we have to take as long as that sounds like a good plan for the group. Um, I will begin to pursue that work between now and the next meeting. Okay, great. Um, and Alexis, are you in fact back? I am. Okay, great. <laughs> nice to have you back. Um, Thank you. <laughs> um, okay, so with that in mind, let's just, I just want to get through the rest of this here and we'll table the interview questionnaire for a moment because I want to tie it back to our discussion on the harm report and the questions that we have um, from Mattia and Anita on the harm report. So um, just checking, Irv, are you still watching even with your camera off? Just, I don't wanna to get too far into this. If, uh, no, we... go ahead, I, uh, yes. Okay. I, I, uh, I, I think that, and I just need to tell you, I have been on call since three o'clock this afternoon yeah. and I'm reaching my limit. I hear you, yeah, yep. I totally hear that. Um, so let let me just hang on one second. Let me just look here. Um, okay. I think what we can do is um, table the discussion on the harm report that is tying into um, the questionnaire um, and really focus for right now, if everyone's okay with it, on the survey piece of things and sort of utilize the folks we have who are willing to work with us on this on the survey. Um, and then at our next meeting, I'd like to, I invited Mattia, I think Anita is here, but I can't see who's here when I'm sharing screen, um, but we can invite them back yeah, okay. Mattia couldn't make it tonight. So, um, but with advance notice, she can do a Thursday night. So we can invite her back for the next meeting. Uh, Alexis? Um, I, and I, I, I apologize because I know I was like, I had to go. And so this is the reason why I missed it. But were we able to talk at all about the workshops listed there? I guess I just wanted to know a little bit more information about them That's um, under Engage. Yes, yes, that is what I was about to move on to right now. And I want to honor what Herb said about sort of losing his, uh, <laughs> his being tired. And so we'll, ha we'll wrap up after this. We'll go through this um, piece about the workshops and then um, we'll do our second public comment and, and we can sort of, and determine the next time we want to meet. And then we'll go from, you know, we'll go from there. Um, so let's, yeah, let's go through these. Uh, so these um, on the educate side are three programs um, and we're not limited to these three programs. These are three programs that I am proposing based on various conversations that I've had in the community and what I know is available to us. Um, and we can add to this and we can, of course, any one of these may not work for the group. Um, so the first one you saw in your packet, the Stolen Beam series. Um, so this series was developed by the JCA Reparations Committee. They tailored a, a curriculum specifically for the African Heritage Reparation Assembly to use, which I'm very, very grateful for. Um, and this is, a wonderful program. I can tell you, I actually facilitated a session with Matthew. It's a five-week session 
Um, and I, I was a facilitator, a co-facilitator with Matthew, and we had a great group of Amherst residents who participated. And it is a very rich curriculum. Um, and the way that it is set up is you unpack the material together. So you meet for five sessions and um, you have reading materials. Did everyone have a chance to look at the, the Okay, great. Alexis, did you have a chance to look at it? Okay, great. Um, Irv, did you have a chance to look at the stolen beam? Yeah, when it was, uh, yes, I've been aware of that for some time, yes. Okay, great. So the idea here, and just so you, you know, for all three of these um, particular educational programs, um, our foray could be the sort of organizing body to take that off of the AHRA. Like we're not an event planning committee. Um, and so we can sort of contract at no cost our foray who will make sure that these programs are getting marketed and who will make sure that these programs, that people are getting registered. We have our, or our foray has its own Zoom account both a meeting account and a webinar account. So um, it would sort of be um, a little bit, it would give us more flexibility and less of a burden to have to plan these events as, a, as a, an assembly. Um, the owning up, oh yeah, Alexis, please. I'm sorry, um, okay. I Well, I know that you didn't even finish talking about them, but I guess I was wondering if these, are I, I what what are the where are the words that I guess I'm wondering if these are directly tied to and like like is this a part of some like our oh god okay so so in this being in the same piece of paper this is a part of our engage and educate like this is all coming from essentially coming as a part of the AHRA's mission or is this is this more so reparations for Amherst or is that, I, I understand that you said that reparations for Amherst would be willing to take on um, a workload, but I guess I'm, I'm afraid of like, you know, saying like, yeah, like these are workshops under like, uh, like giving our blessing, like giving my blessing without even like knowing what the workshop is like. Um, I would love to actually like, if, if, even if there were like, like recordings or like a, a, an opportunity to like see the curriculum or anything. I feel like that would give me a way better um, idea about it. If this is something indeed that like is going to be a part of, or like have in any way, like some sort of affiliation with the AHRA. Um, so, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And um, yeah, so the stolen beam, the curriculum is in our packet. Um, and I, I don't think we'd be able to get recordings because they're sort of, um, the sessions aren't recorded because they're, you know, sort of personal, um, you know, they're not public in any way. Um, so I wouldn't, I don't think I'd be able to get recordings, but the stolen beam uh, curriculums in the packet and both, excuse me, Jeff and Devorah, who are the creators of this this particular program, um, they have both offered to come and to answer questions. They're both traveling this week, um, but they have both offered to come the next time we meet and answer questions. And, um, but I'm not sure how else we might be able to sort of get a read on it other than, like I said, I, I facilitated it. Um, we might be able to talk to some folks who participated in it. Um, that could be an option. And then for the owning up workshops that Matthew is wanting or offering to facilitate, I know that he would absolutely come and talk about what he has in mind. I thought his vision was really fantastic. Um, and so we could bring him on as a presenter at our next meeting. And then this one here on the road, the case for local reparations, I have actually a slideshow presentation that I could share with you all um, that goes through. I've given this presentation to Applewood um, and it went really, really well. And in fact, I just got an email that 
Applewood is crafting their diversity committee at Applewood is crafting a letter in support of reparations to go to the town council um, as a result of that, not just as a result of that, but it, it sort of has sparked um, an interest. So that's what I'm thinking we might want to do is sort of gather all of these people. So invite Jeff and Devora, invite Matthew, um, and then at our next meeting, have those folks here to answer questions and and sort of de further develop these ideas um, in collaboration with the AHRA. Does that work? Okay, <laughs> great. Um, any other questions or comments on this? Okay, all right, so let me stop sharing here. And I'm just going to, um, so we're going to just do two more things. We're going to do a public comment, if there is public comment, and then we are going to do, um, we're just going to pick a date for our next meeting. Um, so I am going to open it up again for public comment. Um, during the public comment period, the chair will recognize members of the public. When called on, please identify yourself by stating your full name, pronouns, and residential address. You're welcome to speak for up to three minutes. And um, we will not engage in a dialogue, but we will be listening. So if you'd like to speak, please raise your hand. Okay. Anita, I'm going to, oh, you're in. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, um, Anita Saro, she, her, hers. I'm at 39 Chapel Road. And as Michelle mentioned, I um, have worked with Matea on the original uh, reparations report last year um, and agreed to go forward with um, what we were calling the harm report. Just to uh, give you some reflection on what I just heard, because this kind of opens, opens up our questions even further than what we had submitted to Michelle with respect to our questions about the harm report. But when I, and I only just saw the uh, community engagement and education, it seems that the survey itself has an objective more of raising awareness in a larger audience, whereas the interview process focused on African heritage people is much more aligned, at least in my mind and first impression, um, with the um, intention of the harm report, because that was was one one aspect. So I think, um, Mr. Rhodes, you know, um, uh, comments, I think, are, are really important. Um, the objectives and the purpose, it seems that the survey and the education, I could see a line between the two of them and a relationship as I was envisioning the survey, and that could be very wrong, but I saw more of a link there the interview much more focused, much more looking at, at harm um, and getting those very, very important stories out. So it really does feel like there are two things going on there. Um, and I don't know if that might, might help you in, in reflecting and, and developing objectives, um, but, but I do think, you know, it just strikes me that having very clear objectives for both this and the harm report, what population um, is going to be uh, uh, reached, especially since one thing that uh, is mentioned in the uh, initial description of the survey is that this might be an important thing for March 13th. And that's coming up pretty quickly. Um, so it, you know it may it, it may not not uh, come to fruition that quickly, but but I just wanted to underscore everything that that's been said. I think it's really important to have very concrete understanding of the objectives of the activity, and then to what purpose 
to uh, you know what what will this um, this activity further and whether we're talking about the harm report uh, or a survey or um, standalone questionnaires. So that's my only comment. Um, and I look forward to working on on these projects as they unfold. Thank you, Anita. And I'm personally very grateful for your involvement and, and very much appreciative. Um, all right. So I just would like for us, oh, um, Ella, let's see. Ella Adams. Um, Hi, Ella. Hi, can you guys hear me? Yes, you're good. Awesome. Okay. Hi, I just wanted to say, introduce myself. My name is Ella Adams. I'm a journalism student at UMass. I use she, her, her pronouns, and I live on Meadow Street. Um, I'm, I've am i done reporting about um, push for reparations in Amherst last semester um, for a class that I was in this semester. I'm in an advanced podcasting class. I'm following up on this, on the work that you guys are doing and how um, you're kind of, kind of looking at reparations nationally, but also looking at them on a smaller scale in Amherst. So I just wanted to put that out there, let you guys know what I'm doing. If you all want to talk to me about this or are open to having a conversation, that would be greatly appreciated. Um, Michelle has my contact information, but I just wanted to say hi and thank you so much. Thank you, Ella. Yes, and I do have your contact. So anyone who would like to speak with Ella, please let me know. Um, I'll just go ahead and send everybody Ella's contact information so you can decide if you'd like to speak with her. All right. Um, so now let's just figure out, well, actually, I realized when I said figuring out a next date, um, we don't have Yvonne and we don't have Dr. Shabazz here. Um, I also realized that Irv's schedule was sort of getting moved around a bunch and Yvonne said Thursdays were becoming more difficult for her. Um, however, Thursdays are, you know, they're, they're, meetings are just piling on meetings <laughs> at this point. Um, and so does anybody here have know that they have a particular night that they just, is it totally out? Because if there's not, if it's not like that, then I'm just going to send a doodle poll and we can respond to the doodle poll and see what the best. Yes, Alexis. Wednesdays are pretty much impossible for me. Okay, great. Um, and I also just want to say that I do run the school committee meetings, um, but like once they start, I'm pretty much, well, okay, wait, I just remember doctors in the school committee, so never mind. Same night, right? It would be anyway. So yeah, okay. Uh, Shell, can you send a doodle poll? I can totally send a doodle poll. Oh, you mean by open meeting law? Can I send a doodle poll? Yeah. I, Does Lynn yeah. send doodle polls? I've not. I've only seen Athena do it. I think I could send a doodle poll. I think I can. Um, my understanding. I'll double check on this, but as long as I'm just doing scheduling, I can do that. Um, but you know, without opinions or anything like that, just simply scheduling or were you going to, um, I just say, you know, most meetings are happening Tuesday, Wednesdays, and Thursdays. Mm -hmm. Um, and I know, but Monday is council. So Mondays mm -hmm. are usually council. So, uh, but Tuesday, Wednesdays, and Thursdays are just, and it's budget season. And, um, so those meetings are just compounded. They really are. I know. Or just, I'd love to just poll the the members that are here. Would like a daytime meeting ever be possible if it was not two hours? Like if we just wanted to have an hour meeting just to do the survey, for example. That is a yes for you, Hala. What about um, Irv and yeah. Alexis? Yeah. So daytimes work a hell of a lot better for me than evenings. Okay, well, that's really good information. What about for you, Jennifer? Would that be, would daytime be, <laughs> would I get in trouble for it? No, no, <laughs> okay. uh, we can meet whenever. I, you know, the more consistent it is, the better for me, because then it can just be in my schedule, but exactly. um, it's really up to you guys, so. Okay, well, what I'll do is if, 
so daytime wise, what days would be best? Or give me your best day times, not times, just days. Any of those days during the day works. Um, you know, prior to four o'clock is okay. better for me. Um, what about you, Alexis? Um, I probably, okay, sorry, I'm pulling up my calendar. Um, so probably Tuesdays during the day are tough for me. So probably Wednesdays are okay and Thursdays are okay. okay. Fridays are okay. Um, but I'm pretty much like I can't, like if we're going to go over an hour, I might be a little strapped for time. Okay, good to know. All right. And how about you, Hala? Wednesdays will not work. Sorry, Alexis. Mm -hmm. But um, Thursdays of work and then Fridays after the elementary school committee meeting around 11. Anything Friday after 11 or Thursdays. Okay. And then Monday and Tuesday. Oh, okay. Monday and Tuesday. Um, Tuesday doesn't work for Alexis, but is Monday an option for you, Alexis? It's all right. Okay. All right. So let me see what we can figure out. I'll call Dr. Shabazz and... Um, I don't have a good way of getting a hold of Yvonne, um, but I will try to email her. You do? Okay. okay. And can I text her your phone number so she can text you? Her that number would be there. perfect. If you could do that, that would be great. Um, good. Okay. So we'll figure it out. I'll try to wrap that up very quickly so we know we have another meeting. And then we'll have a lot of folks that we want to invite back. So we'll try to coordinate all that too. Um, so if there are there any other questions or comments before I adjourn? Nothing. All right. Well, thank you all. Thanks for a great meeting. It was really great to see you and um, we'll see you soon and adjourning at 8.16 p.m. <laughs>